Fall is finally here. And you guys who watch my videos know what that means. It is time for my empties. I do these seasonally, share with you guys the products that I finished up in the realm of skincare. I do have a few hair care products here. Now, I do my sunscreen empties as a separate video just to keep these videos from getting too long. So stay tuned for that. That will be coming. This video is a sunscreenless empties video. All right, getting into it. Um, I'll go ahead and include this. It's not skincare per se, but it can relate to your skin. Um, first of all, oral hygiene, super important for your health. Uh, many mouth rinses and toothpaste products, they, have fla they use flavorants uh, to make the experience, I guess, more pleasurable for you. And the mint, the, the cinnamon, the peppermint, those flavors, they can end up being very irritating around your mouth. And a lot of people, for a lot of people, women especially, that ends up being a trigger for perioral dermatitis. And for whatever reason, the kids' flavors tend to not have that issue. So I have gone down the rabbit hole over the past, I don't know, year, year and a half of exploring kids' toothpaste and kids' fluoride rinses and the different flavors. And I've had this realization that mint and cinnamon are just overrated for oral hygiene. And if you're stuck in the mint cinnamon bandwagon, I encourage you to step on over to the kids' aisle because they have a lot of fun flavors that just, I don't know, our pleasure to work with. So I rather enjoyed this pineapple punch. And so yeah, highly recommend this if you are in the market. This is, even though it's marketed for kids, it has a fluoride amount in it that that is um, appropriate for adults as well. So you get the benefits of the fluoride. Shampoo and conditioner, I made it through um, Function of Beauty shampoo and conditioner. I love this, fully customizable hair care products that you can have delivered to your door. I like them because you can get the formula to get, you know, you can tweak the formula for your specific hair type and hair needs, which may change for you depending on the season or whatever you're doing with your hair as far as treatments. You may need something different, but you can keep it fragrance free, uh, which I like. You know, if you like fragrance free shampoo and conditioner, you're allergic to fragrance, you want to avoid it. It can be tricky to actually find a shampoo and conditioner that end up working for your hair type. I have been using them now, um, actually, is it like my three year anniversary? It was in an October, it was, it was uh, in October. Uh, I think it was three years ago at this point. Wow, time flies that I started using Function Beauty. Uh, highly recommend them, and I just like the convenience of having them delivered to your door. All that being said, you know, about the fragrance and whatnot, I actually love fragrance and shampoos and conditioners. I know, right? Like, um, I'm not allergic to it, and I like scented shampoos and conditioners as well. And I always like, I, I get like impulsive when it comes to shampoo and conditioner. I'll pretty much try any and I love affordable hair care products. So I decided to give Suave a chance again. Uh, I haven't used it in many years. Rosemary and mint. But, so when I purchased this, I had to have the, sh the conditioner to go with it. I, that's just how I am. I have to have the matching. I'm not gonna use another conditioner that doesn't match the shampoo. Like, yeah, I'm one of those people. So I purchased the shampoo elated by the fact that the shampoo does not have methyl isothiazolinone, didn't bother to look at the ingredients on the conditioner, and it does. So yeah, that stinks. I don't recommend using hair care products, shampoos, conditioners, body care products with methyl isothiazolinone. There's a little lizard out there. Um, because it is a common allergen in hair care products. But all that to say, Suave was was not disappointing. My hair did well with it. Moving on into the realm of skincare products, I finished the e.l.f. Skin Pure Skin Cleanser with Oat Milk. This was a very nice, mild, gentle cleanser, quite affordable. I reviewed this line a long time ago. Never actually made it through the moisturizer in completion. I got you know sidetracked with another product I was trying out for you guys. But I did finish the cleanser, which is good because it's good within six months of opening. So I always try and get through stuff by the good within opening, a little open jar with the number and the months that tells you how long it's good after opening. So I did finish this. Uh, nice, gentle, mild cleanser with oat milk in it. Check out my review on that. 
product. Uh, speaking of gentle cleanser, finished up this one. I love it's the Hydro Boost with Hyaluronic Acid Hydrating Cleansing Gel. I rather enjoy the experience of using a cleansing gel. And this is a favorite, free of fragrance, which is good because the Neutrogena Hydro Boost products that do have fragrance, it's too intense. Like I can't handle it. All right. I finished the Aven Tolerance uh, Extremely Gentle Cleanser Lotion. This is a great makeup remover and it technically doesn't even have to be rinsed off of the skin. So I get a lot of comments, you know, I'm gonna be camping or whatever, what do you recommend for removing sunscreen and things when I don't have access to running water? This is a great product. The only problem is the bottle is rather large. And in a video, when I was going to go on a trip, I remember decanting it into a little silicone thing, not really thinking much about it. And one of you guys commented like, is that such a good idea? And you're absolutely right. The problem with decanting products like this into you know, smaller bottles is that this particular product does not have any um, preservatives. It's preservative free. It's meant for people with very sensitive skin. So by doing that, you know, you introduce the issue that it could go off. Fortunately, you know, I was only using it a couple of days. It wasn't a big deal, but yeah. Um, so I don't recommend doing that. And all that to say, you know, if you're going camping, is this a good size to be lugging around? I don't know. I imagine not since when you're camping, it's all about less is more as far as stuff you have to carry, but it does work well by itself to wipe off dirt, residue, sunscreen, all that crud, including around the eyes. So wanted to share that with you. Speaking of effective, gentle uh, cleansers for breaking up the film of cosmetic residue, this Cozy Softimo Speedy Cleansy, cl Cleansy Cleansing Oil, love it. This is comparable to the Hot Labo cleansing oil that I'm currently using. Really like this. Affordable oil. I, can, I buy it on Amazon. It's a Japanese brand. Um, I use this first to my face uh, to break up cosmetics, you know, my mascara and my water resistant sunscreen. And then I step in the shower and I use a gentle cleanser as a second step. You know, for example, the Hydro Boost um, or the e.l.f. one. Yeah, but if you're in the market for a cleansing oil or you've never tried one before and you don't want to, you know, break the bank, some of them can be really expensive. It's like, dude, we're just trying to, we're just trying to take residue off here. Um, slow your row, but you know, that's the skincare industry. Uh, but if you're looking for one that's, that's pretty affordable yet effective, try that. The Japanese cleansing oils, they're top notch. I mean, I feel like it's been a more popular thing in Japan at least. Uh, for much longer than, you know, it's it, it's only in the, I don't know, past eight or so years, well, I'll say give or take, taken on here in the here in the States. Now this is a product I was shocked and somewhat um, ashamed by how much I loved. And it's the Tasha Kisu uh, Lip Mask. And it does have fragrance in it, which you guys know, I'm not a fan of fragrance and flavorance on the lips can be really an issue for dry lips, but it must be very little because I don't, there's no aroma with this. It says peach lip jelly. There was no aroma with that. Man, I finished it up. This is good. Uh, it really worked well in terms of keeping the lips soft, hydrated, uh, and you know, I'm vulnerable to getting dry lips because of, likely because my eczema comes and goes, flares up. Plus, if I eat certain foods, like if I drink tea a lot, I get some irritation on my lips. I had to stop chewing gum years ago because that would always aggravate my lips. Anyways, if I'm eating a lot of cinnamon, you guys know I like to make apples in the slow cooker and put a lot of cinnamon on them, slow cooker like applesauce. If I am eating that a lot, I can get a lot of irritation. This was like a dream come true. It really is, is a good product. I've been trying out a lot of Tatcha products over the years, and in my opinion, a lot of them are just like, they're not bad, but it's like, why are we paying for that? Are we, we're basically, people who buy Tatcha, um, you know, I think a lot of what they're paying for is the packaging. They do put a lot of, you know, effort in the fun of their packaging, but honestly, this product, I was actually taken aback by, the lip mask, the Kisu lip mask. And I think when I, when this first came out, I think I ragged on it like, ugh, whatever oil or emollient they're raving, whatever the ingredient in there that they're claiming is like the secret to life. 
I was like, there's no data for that. And there's not, but it, it's a good product. <laughs> All right. Here's something that I really enjoyed. Uh, the Eucerin Intensive Repair Essential Oil Balm. This is like a cross between a cream and an oil. Very emollient, but it reduces water loss out of the skin. You know, if you put oil all over your skin, it makes it look glowy and shiny just by kind of smoothing everything down, but it doesn't do such a great job of like reducing water loss out of the skin or, or anything like that. This product kind of gives you that oil look but it also has the effect of a cream. Hate the name, because uh, there are no essential oils in this. Uh, it's fragrance free, um, but I really enjoy this a lot and would definitely repurchase. But a lot of you guys commented that it's too greasy for you. If you like slugging, uh, your body especially, uh, you might like that because it's kind of it's kind of the experience that you get with smearing Vaseline all over your skin Which I rather enjoy especially for the body stubborn pa dry patches on the knees the thighs But it spreads on the skin a lot e a lot more easily than thick Vaseline it sinks into the skin uh, a bit better as well speaking of smearing petrolatum all over your body. It finished up Aquaphor Healing Ointment. I do not recommend buying the tube of this. Uh, instead, I recommend the jar because it, it's actually very unwieldy getting the product out of here. Um, but I, use, I bought this to compare it to my favorite CeraVe Healing Ointment. Spoiler alert, if you missed that video, I prefer CeraVe Healing Ointment, but Aquaphor, you know, it's one of those house divided kind of things uh, as far as products. Some people are just Aquaphor loyalists. It's not a bad product unless you are allergic to lanolin, which this does have. Um, then it, it, you know the CeraVe healing ointment or plain Vaseline would be a better option. But this past uh, summer, oddly enough, uh, I got really into what I call body slugging, putting the petrolatum like on my thighs, my lower legs, my arms and then uh, kind of wrapping up in an old robe, letting it sink in, and it really, really helped. Just like, it, it almost took years off of my thighs. And I say oddly enough for the summer because this kind of practice is something that people tend to lean into more in the winter months when it's cold, dry, and they wanna you know, wrap up in things. Whereas in the summer when it's hot, the idea of putting ointment all over your body is like, kind of oppressive, but I got into it and it really, uh, you know, I really saw some benefit cosmetically for sure. In terms of just the look, I tend to neglect my thighs when it comes to moisturizing. Body moisturizing, it's kind of time intensive. Um, and sometimes I'm just lazy or, you know, I skip it, I'm in a hurry or whatever, but man, it really paid off putting it on, on the thighs. So finish that. I also finished this expensive Isden Age Contour Night Cream. Um, which had fragrance and this product looked really nice actually on the skin and it gives the skin kind of this emollient glow. It has melatonin in it, which is thought to be helpful for reducing oxidative stress in the skin. Uh, and it's a very popular product from them, but I was not, I was not that impressed with it. And then the melatonic serum, um, I also finished up most of it. This is a lot, this is not an empty, but I'm done with it. I think I have about this much more, I think I have about this much more left, but every time I use this, I'm okay for a while, but it starts to irritate my skin. I start to be more uh, sensitive and perhaps, I, I don't know what it is about this formula. This also has Bakuchiol in it, it could be that. Um, I'm not entirely sure. It has fragrance, so I just stopped using this and I'm done with it, but I'm showing it here to just clue you guys in that neither of these products would be ones that I would repurchase um, and they're very expensive. I did buy them myself. Speaking of expensive Isden products, I likewise, I actually finished the Melaclear in its entirety. This worked out well for me. It is a antioxidant serum. It has vitamin C in it, a very low percentage, which is probably why I was able to tolerate it. I find that vitamin C serums for me it's like the, I go through a honeymoon phase with using them the first couple of weeks, and then thereafter, my skin gets very irritated, and I actually will develop little whiteheads quite easily with many uh, ascorbic acid serums. So I don't you know, enjoy them. I think it's because as they oxidize, 
my skin is very sensitive to them. This one, maybe because the ascorbic acid is not as high as most vitamin C serums are, um, I did tolerate it, but I did have that honeymoon phase with it where the skin looked very, you know, whoo, alive and glowy. But currently I am using and almost finished with it actually, it should appear next season in my empties video. I'm currently using that May Love Fade Away Brightening Serum. I much prefer that to this. It gives you that uh, bang of brightening up the skin tone, helping with hyperpigmentation, but it's much more moisturizing and uh, hydrating, and it also is easier for me to tolerate. So I would not repurchase the Melaclear, but I would, I would consider repurchasing the Fade Away one, um, which you should see in another in another empties video. Um, I don't usually include my tretinoin empties, but I threw it in here. Um, I did make my way through a tretinoin. I finish a tube of this, the um, 20 gram tube, roughly every four months. Last but not least, I have a mascara here, the um, Rare Beauty Mascara. I actually really like this. Um, Selena Gomez, you know, celebrity stuff is usually like, you know, a, a, I don't want to say cash grab. I feel like we throw that ter terminology around, but let's be honest. Like a lot of celebrity skin skincare and cosmetics fragrances, you're paying a premium. But this is actually really good. I really liked it a lot. The Rare Beauty Black Mascara. Um, this was good, and I actually really like the packaging too. Um, easy to use wand. I mean, yeah, I really like this, and that is an empty. Likewise, I finished the um, Gekimo Open Up Mascara. I actually enjoyed this too. I discovered this on the Amazonian. And what I liked about it is I, I like never use mascara on my bottom lashes, but it comes with this, um, it's two, head, two, two headed <laughs> mascara. And one aside is a little thin brush for your lower lashes. And then the top, is a curled arch or an arched brush for your top lashes. Really like this. It did give a nice curl lift. My only gripe with it is that I think that this, the top, the wand for the top, I think they should make the uh, handle uh, longer for it because I think the shorter, the short length between the base and the bristles, I think it makes it so that you're more likely to get flex onto your upper eyelid, and I did have that issue with this. However, this works out really well for applying mascara to the lower lashes. Anyways, you guys, that is everything as far as skincare, hair care, mouthwash empties from this past season, summer, flew by. I actually had a really great summer. Um, you know, I'd like to, I love fall. I love all the events around fall, but it's still pretty hot here in like October. Um, November, it tends to cool down a bit, but yeah, we don't really get that like fall here at all. But uh, I did have a really good summer. I hope you guys did too. Thank you so much for watching this. Make sure you have your bell notifications on so you know when my sunscreen empties video goes live. You won't wanna miss that. A lot of good sunscreen empties from over the summer. But if you guys enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.